it's great to be here. Thanks so much, Peter, for inviting me. Uh, I've spent about 20 years thinking about this profound issue we have of having to transform our energy sector from one built entirely on fossil fuels to one that is more sustainable and more resilient and more equitable. And that's just a massive undertaking. You cannot underestimate the massiveness of that undertaking. Um, and so for me, the questions are, how can we think about optimism around AI toward that transformation? And I think there's a few different areas. Uh, that transformation is gonna take fundamentally massive numbers of projects, so new types of energy generation, transmission, it's been estimated by Princeton that 80% of the benefits of the Inflation Reduction Act will not be realized without doubling our transmission capacity. It will take projects in supply chains because of geopolitical changes and economic changes. It will take projects on the ground. So massive numbers of projects in places. So how do we think about what AI can do to enable the projects and to make sure that they work in the places where we envision them? Um, so I think there's three interesting ideas uh, that I'll throw out in this conversation. The first is, um, how do we think about AI to speed up permitting and siting. So permitting and siting, very prosaic issues, but it's turning out that these projects are taking years and years and years and years to get cited. And some of that is because of processes like the National Environmental Protection Act and California Environmental Quality Act, which are really important and ensure that there isn't an over, uh, overly burdensome impact of the projects on places. There are ways to do that faster. I believe there are people at my old office in the Department of Energy working right now on thinking about AI's role in going through tens and hundreds of thousands of NEPA and CEQA documents to find patterns, to find areas where people have been successful in making arguments and just basically make that easier for the people that are trying to get these projects done. I'm really excited about that. The second big area is another prosaic area. That's my world. I think about tactical steel in the ground issues. Um, interconnection, you can build the best solar project in the world, but if you can't get it connected to the grid, it is nothing but a bunch of solar panels in the desert. Interconnection can take up to a decade or longer right now because of these things called interconnection queues. The utilities have lists and lists and lists of thousands of projects that everyone wants to get onto the grid. Whose job is it to look, sort through all those projects? It's the job of power system engineers. We have a shortage of them in the United States and worldwide. And they're dealing with multi-factor analysis. They're trying to figure out the size of the project, the, the impact of the project, the place, all of the environmental factors that contribute to the project and its ability to do what it says it's gonna do. What about using AI to sort through some of those lists to cluster projects according to location, similar characteristics, similar ability to solve problems? That is something that doesn't replace the power system engineers, but enables them to do their job better and faster and get those projects online. And the last thing I wanna talk about is, is places, is these communities. Why does it matter so much that people interact with places when it comes to the energy transition? We're talking about a, a new energy economy that is massively distributed with many different types of technologies and many inputs all over the place. And those communities and workers Unlike many in this room, myself included, most Americans, most people in the world are not particularly mobile. People stay where they were born for the most part. People are invested in their homes, which are very, very hard to transform into economic mobility. Um, people stay where they are because of cultural reasons, all kinds of reasons. How do we make sure these projects work for places? One of the ways we do that is to make sure that the companies coming in with proposals are doing an actual analysis of the place they're coming in, that they're actually doing something that works for the place. In economic development world, we call this asset mapping. You look at the infrastructure, the workforce, the labor skills, you look at the culture of a place, what's worked in the past, what hasn't worked, what are the supply chains, what's the access to markets. All of that asset mapping is something that right now many communities have to hire consultants to do, and they're expensive. And they're doing the same thing over and over and over again in these communities. How can we get to under-resourced communities with AI to do asset mapping better so that they can come to the table with these companies and say, this is why you should be here, this is what it means to be in our community, and this is how we can work together in partnership for the energy future. So I'm excited. You have to be an optimist to work on climate change anyway, because otherwise you're just depressed all the time. 
but I'm excited about the potential for AI to really enable this transformation and make the world a better place. Thanks.